absolute logic leading to totalitarianism. Here we go. Um, where to start on this? Um, I'm. I don't really get the impression when looking at my own arguments and the way I've put my case in this regard. I don't think that I've really been all that clear, but the problem is this is the result of 40 years of ruminations. And you don't just sort of come to some sort of conclusion, assuming that this is a conclusion, that logic or absolute logic leads to totalitarianism, or could create thinking that facilitates totalitarianism. That's not something I think that you would arrive at overnight. Mine came from uh, my sort of, I won't say belief, but my cautious nature when approaching anything that claims absolute validity um, <clears throat> comes essentially from my experience of reading history um, <clears throat> and reading satire even, like Orwell. Um, how shall we come at this to not cover ground I've already attempted to cover? Um, how about we read it backwards? Okay. The way that I'm, the way that I'm perceived to be putting this, I think, is that if we accept that, or that I'm saying that, if we accept that two plus two equals four, uh, we are paving the way to totalitarianism. If we accept that A is A, we're paving the way to totalitarianism. Not necessarily. Um, I. I I'll concede that right off the bat. It's not guaranteed to go to totalitarianism. Um, and as I said, I'd like to look at this backwards. <clears throat> if we say that 2 plus 2, or some sort of A is A, or some sort of base axiom that we'll no longer question, if that's going to lead to totalitarianism, what would... how could maybe making that assertion that A is A could prevent us from heading towards totalitarianism. Um, I uh, sort of cross swords with Schlock of God on this. I get the impression I've really rubbed him the wrong way, but I noticed I really rub people the wrong way with this questioning of identity thing. Has identity become a religion, maybe? Is uh, A is A the postmodern version of La ilaha la Muhammad Rasulallah? Um, it might be. I don't know. But when you start questioning people at this level, you start to run into what starts to smell like belief. Anyway, <clears throat> if A is A can lead to totalitarianism, what can, how can A is A not lead to totalitarianism or protect us from totalitarianism? Assuming that totalitarianism, we've already established, is undesirable, something to be avoided. Um... I think totalitarianism is to be avoided in and of itself simply because it tries to shape humans into a human-created idea. It tries to encapsulate reality and then attempts to enforce that reality on, on people. Um, okay, Orwell. I really like throwing Orwell in everybody's face. <clears throat> he said, Freedom is the freedom to say 2 plus 2 equals 4. Once that is granted, all else follows. Now, what was he saying there? I know a few people are really going to leap on this, but I, I'm perfectly game. I'm the one that threw this out here. Um, well, I think that he was talking... He was referring to the totalitarian governing party or godlike leader figure saying that reality is what I say it is. In other words, um, reality is absolute, but it's only absolute in as much as it's whatever the party or the leader um, says it is. So in other words, it's completely changeable, completely malleable, depending on the needs of the party, or the needs of the state, or the needs of society. Um, we can change reality utterly from one moment to the next. 
Orwell in 1984 had an example where right in the middle of this massive hate week rally, a uh, speaker was denouncing the enemies, denouncing the, the foreigners, denouncing the country they were at war with. I guess I think he was at that point, Oceania was a, at war with Eurasia, and the speaker's like giving a passionate speech about death to Eurasia, death to the leaders of Eurasia, death to the horrible um, m murdering armies of Eurasia. And he's handed a slip of paper without even breaking the syntax. He reads the paper and bing, the wording changes immediately. Death to Eurasia, long live our, or sorry, death to East Asia, the other country. Long live our, our allies, our traditional allies, the wonderful stalwart people of Eurasia. Right in the middle of the speech. Um, you're switching from one absolute to another absolute using doublethink, which is the capacity to sort of immediately forgetting ever having believed the opposite of what you believe now, or not even the opposite, anything else other than what you believe this very second, because right now the party demands this. Totalitarianism works that way. Um, the whole theory behind totalitarianism is to organize society in, in a way that it can turn on a dime if necessary, depending on the needs of society as defined by somebody. Somebody has to make the decision as to what's good for society. That's the ruling party or, you know, the godlike leader. We need the ability to completely control society at all levels uh, because, say, you know, we, we need efficiency or we need, um, there's a big crisis besetting us or we have a long, hard slog ahead of us to build the perfect society or whatever. So we need iron determination, iron will, and unquestioning loyalty, really obedience, to the dictates of the party. The party has the interests of everyone at, at heart, and you, if you question that, you're questioning every, the interests of everybody in society. So really, uh, Mussolini has his famous or infamous statement, um, Il Duce ha sempre ragione. Mussolini is always right. In other words, if Mussolini says 2 plus 2 equals 5, then 2 plus 2 equals 5 for the purposes of um, organizing society and enforcing the discipline of society. But if we sort of put reality outside of the party's control, absolutely, then 2 plus 2 equals 4 in all possible worlds, and once that is granted, all else follows. In other words, the... the um, the backbone of totalitarianism is this assumption that um, whatever the leader says or whatever the party says is right, is right, guaranteed, absolute right. Once we put something beyond the party's grasp to actually fiddle with reality like that, we are on the road to freedom. Maybe. Um, but I... Again, you, we have to understand that there's a difference between animate absoluteness. In other words, an animate absoluteness is sort of this moving window of absolute truth. And it could be a moving window of only a couple of seconds, as we saw in uh, Orwell's 1984, where the guy changed his speech right in the middle of it to contradict everything he'd just said and then forgot having contradicted it. And then the crowd that he was railing to had to actually pick up on that quickly or be denounced. <laughs> um, <clears throat> high Stalinism worked like that. Um, you actually had to paranoiacally follow the news to find out what was true today so you could slavishly parrot the truth. Animate truth. Animate absolute. Animate reality. Animate A is A. As in... A is A if I say it is. Tomorrow, A may not be A because I say it is, because the needs of the party and the state and society have changed. Then the following day, A might be A again. Now, is that relativism or is that animate absoluteness? <laughs> Whatever the leader says is right. Whatever the leader says is absolute. And there's a reason for this. There's an intellectual underpinning for this. Again, it's the idea that society has to be controlled rigidly from the center because we're 
you know, we require this kind of flexibility in, in our civilization to adapt to the new needs of the moment. Um, what would we call that? This sort of moving window of absoluteness, where yesterday Oceania was at war with Eurasia and always would be at war with Eurasia. Today, Oceania is at war with East Asia and always has been at war with East Asia, and no contradiction has taken place between today and yesterday. Why? Animate certainty, animate absoluteness. A completely malleable certainty that denies being malleable um, is the kind of fiddling with reality that's required to make totalitarian ideologies work. Um, religions work like this as well. Anything that says this is reality um, this is reality as defined by people and that our definition of it is good enough. Anyone who questions that is a thought criminal or trying to mess things up for everybody else etc. So you don't say that tomorrow we might believe the exact opposite of today, but in totalitarian societies, because you have complete, you, you have no um, means of questioning anything, and you better not question anything, because the consequences are horrible. Um, okay, 2 plus 2 equals 5 might be the truth tomorrow, um, because the party said so. And tomorrow, when we do believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5, we would never we will never have actually said at any time in the past that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Um, this has turned into a bit of a ramble, and it's unfortunate, but it's, it's a complex idea. Um, as I said, I think if you want to take anything from this video, it's this moving window of absoluteness, and a moving window that may not last more than a couple of seconds. It could last a couple of years, whatever. Truth is this way, but when we need truth to mean something else, we'll believe just as strongly as we now believe in this truth, even if the new truth contradicts this one. Animate absoluteness. A moving window. I'll see if this makes any sense.